so weird. Am I supposed to do this now? I think so. <sighs> Hi, I'm Emily, aka The Literary Queen, and I'm here to talk to you about the book I started and finished reading last night. My name is Lucy Barton by Elizabeth Strout. I first discovered Elizabeth Strout when reading Olive Kittredge, her Link short story collection that then won the Pulitzer Prize, which means a lot of rich and well-read white people really liked this book. But it is actually really good. However, I'm not here to talk to you about that. I'm here to talk to you about Lucy Barton. It is deceivingly short at only 191 pages, but those of you wanting a simple read, don't read this one. It's pretty, I'd say intense. It deals with issues of abuse and my personal favorite, mother-daughter relationships, which, well, they're catnip for me, so if my mother's watching this, I'm sorry. One of the reasons I really enjoyed My Name is Lucy Barton is that it deals with the unreliability of memory. And that's something I think we can all relate to because none of us can really remember what happened and which bullet it picked on us and which one did not. This short novel is also about craft, which might be my the real reason I love this. Uh, I wanted to share with you a section that I reread re while already being up late reading it. It's a part where our narrator, Lucy Barton, who of course wants to be a writer, so a little meta there, is discussing her short story, which happens to be, of course, the novel we are reading, Meta, in, in to with her fate with her mentor, Sarah Payne, and the mentor says, "This is a story about a mother who loves her daughter imperfectly, because we all love imperfectly. But if you find yourself protecting anyone as you write this piece, remember this: you're not doing it right. You will have only one story. You'll write your one story many ways. Don't ever worry about story. You have only one." This quote really affected me because I am constantly trying to figure out how to tell my one story. I don't really understand what it is. I know it has to do with mothers and daughters, but other than that, I'm sort of floundering. And so to read a well, a read a novel by Elizabeth Strout, who we know must have gone through many workshops, who's writing about a writer, which you can't help but feel like there's some sort of autobiography in this, about mother and daughter relationships. When this novel is literally about mother-daughter relationships, and our narrator is writing the story with the help of this workshop leader slash writer that becomes My Name is Lucy Barton, it's all very meta and confusing, that really it really struck a chord with me because I was like, all right, Elizabeth Strout's gone through this, I've gone through this, so it's it was incredibly helpful and inspiring. I don't know what my one story is though, so check back, maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe I'll review my own book and that will be weird. <laughs> but I also really, really felt for this story because it dealt with the issue of abuse in a way that was really, really subtle because you're reading, you're throughout it, you're realizing she grew up poor and that's a pretty common story in a lot of novels is a child from poverty makes it. But look at most Charles Dickens books. But in this, you, there's more going on and you don't know. There's just little hints of it. She talks, she doesn't speak to either of her siblings. Her father, who we know is involved in World War II, is barely mentioned. And why is she strange with her mother? That's a huge deal. It's never really talked about. We slowly get little hints throughout, but it's never explained. And then when she's writing about her abuse, which again, never detailed, the, the most we get about it is when she visits a therapist and there's a line, later after my first book was published, I went to a doctor who was the most, most gracious woman I've ever met. I wrote down things that happened in my childhood home. I wrote down things I'd find out, I'd found out in my marriage. I wrote down things I would, could not say. She read them all and said, thank you, Lucy, it will be okay. And I think for a lot of people who've gone through abuse uh, of any kind, you can't always talk about it. You can write about it. And what was fascinating is this writer writes about it, but she never puts it in the, her own book. We don't ever fully understand what she went through, but we see its lasting effects. I also really loved this novel because the prose, while really sparse, was incredibly fluid, almost lyrical, but it's, it, which is something I'm not really used to putting together. I usually think if it's sparse, it's like Hemingway and very manly and I killed the cow, the children cried, but that's not the case in this. I just read you a line that was very beautifully written, but it doesn't, there's not a lot of adjectives. We don't know what's going, there's not a lot of description. It's all emotion, but not emotional which is fascinating. I don't know how she did it. I'm in awe of this. 
My biggest complaint about this novel would probably be, well, other than the cover, which just drives me nuts for some reason, I don't know if I have any complaints, actually. Probably that I, I just haven't heard about it. I feel like all of Kittredge got all the love, and people are ignoring My Name is Lucy Barton because they see it as a simple, A, the title is a little, you know, why? <laughs> but uh, there's a lot, the line literally comes up in near the end of the novel, My Name is Lucy Barton. But I feel like there, it, there could have been a different title, not that in the end I'm not really against it. And I don't love the ending. Which I won't give away because I want you to read it because I think it's still really worth it. I also want to point out how beautifully it's laid out. There's lots of little paragraphs and the sections are all really short. Most sections are a few pages. So I'm, it gives me, I'm envious that Elizabeth Stroud can get away with that because most of us writers are trying to write novels that are three or four hundred pages long. City on Fire, I think, is. 600? More? 800? I mean, it's incredibly long. And here's Miss Stroud, who won a Pulitzer, so she doesn't really, she might, people think she might not need to try anymore, but she's like, I'm gonna throw it down, give you something that's under 200 pages that is barely, I mean, it's probably really, if this were published like her other books, I mean, this could, these could be one page instead of two. So it was short and sweet, but really beautiful, and I'm still thinking about it. So much so, I'm giving you a review on it. And thanks for watching.